in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed it takes a decision to take advantage of every provision available by the Spirit and to put your faith to work. So we're praying. Ask the Lord to visit you. Ask the Lord to visit you. Father, give me an encounter in the name of Jesus. Give me an encounter. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my ears that I may hear. My heart is open to receive. My hands are open to receive. My feet is prepared to be directed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to speak to us. Bless our hearts. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Let confusion come to an end over our lives in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes tonight and be glorified in Jesus' name. God bless you. Please be seated. We're considering a very interesting topic. When I saw the topic, I said, wow, this is um, a very interesting thought. So for reference, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. The word of God brings enlightenment to the believer. The word of God opens our eyes to understand the ways of God. And do remember that our excelling in this kingdom depends on the level of spiritual illumination that we have. We rise in this kingdom not just by desire, not just by intention, but upon the strength of the revelation that we have access to. It takes more than a well-intentioned heart to rise and to excel. Our world is full of believers who desire to make all kinds of progress spiritually and otherwise but they are bankrupt of the requisite level of light and revelation. Are we together? Hebrews 11 and verse 6. This is um, an archive. The subject here was a subject of faith. And Paul began in verse 1. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. It says for by it the elders obtained a good report now when we get to verse 6 it says but without faith it is impossible to please him the next part of the verse is my emphasis for tonight it says for he that cometh to God must come believing that he is that means he exists and then number two that he is a rewarder that every time you approach God, you must have 
this orientation as you come before him number one that you are not coming to an idol he is meaning he's alive are we together let it be at the back of your mind that every time you come before the god of heaven you do not come to him as one of the many gods or one of the many deities you must sustain that orientation like the woman with the issue of blood before coming to jesus the bible says she said to herself so men can say to themselves that i am coming to meet a living god i am coming to meet one who hears one who sees and then the second information is that he is a rewarder of them very powerful scriptures there are many things that the bible tells us that god is the bible tells us for instance that god is love the Bible tells us that God is faithful and true. The Bible says God is light. Here, Paul is giving us a very powerful information about God. He says that God among the many names, and I hope you know that every time, biblically, when God names himself after a dimension, it means that he desires that that dimension be captured in the experience of the believer forever. Usually, um, in ancient times when they saw God move in a certain way they would name him after that dimension so that that name will become a memorial that God can also do this are we together now the Bible says when you come to God you must have it at the back of your mind in other words it is safe it is not unscriptural it is not inconsistent with the Christian practice to know God as a rewarder are we together now yes that you must know that he is a rewarder it is his name it is not just what he does he is a rewarder not just that he rewards i can reward without being a rewarder but when i am a rewarder is more than what i do it is who i am i'm bound by the integrity of that name are we together that whosoever satisfies the condition that provokes that name i am committed to seeing that I live up to that name. Say God is a rewarder. One more time. Please say God is a rewarder. It matters that we know and we understand that God is a rewarder. Now, we live in a world where the motivation generally for believers is twofold. Number one, those who just seek God for things. The entire scope of their Christian pursuit is just for things. What to eat, what to wear. For such people, Jesus took out time in Matthew chapter 6 to talk to them and challenge them about an excessive obsession for things alongside the worry that that kind of template of pursuit brings. That if your Christian experience is built on just wanting things, the side effect is that you can never be separated from a life of worry. Are we learning now? So that worry is a consequence is the side effect of being excessively concerned about what to eat what to wear and so on and so forth and he leaves them with an assurance in chapter 6 of matthew that even the birds of the air they do not sow they do not reap that means they violate a fundamental principle yet in the father's benevolence he still made space for their welfare are we together now then we have on the other hand the second group of people who say i love the lord and that is the basis of my pursuit and that is scriptural except that sometimes they go overboard and they close their hands to every reward system and every advantage that comes with our loving god did you understand what i just shared now so that we have two groups of people those who are not interested in god they do not love him they are principally motivated by that which they receive for seeking him the bible cautions such a motivation it should not be the principal motivation of the believer but then on the other hand the bible also cautions people who refuse to receive simply because they are attempting to show their love for jesus christ and they want to him to know how selfless they are and then they go overboard and they do not know that the name father the bible speaking jesus himself was teaching and he taught us that the hallmark of fatherhood is not having children 
the hallmark of fatherhood is the ability to give you are not a father just because you have a child you are a father to the degree to which you are always in a hurry to give he said if you've been evil know how to give good gifts is that true how much more shall your heavenly father give so a true father gives refusing to embrace and receive that which god gives is fighting his fatherhood it's important that we understand this we are never called to reject the givings of god we are never called to frown at the possibility of god rewarding us we are only called to prioritize our loving him more than receiving from him i need to put this as a very strong foundation so that when your christian experience is entirely motivated by receiving 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 from god you are not wrong but you are not complete if your christian experience is motivated by loving jesus loving jesus and when his blessings comes to you you push it away the hymn writer says praise god from whom all blessings flow Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he says thanks be to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ and he began to speak about the fact that he has given us all spiritual blessings and that they reside in heavenly places in Christ so the first point I want to establish tonight is the fact that God is a rewarder God is a giver his very character is built on benevolence it says for god so loved the world not that he asked not that he demanded he gave it is all right to factor it in your christian experience that as i live for god and as i serve him there must be room in my understanding to receive the blessings of god as it comes to me he's called the rewarder one more time say god rewards he is a rewarder are we together what does it mean to reward to reward means to give something to someone in recognition of a service rendered an effort a contribution or an achievement reward has to do with giving something a token of gratitude a token of encouragement are we together now in appreciation for a service that has been rendered your effort your contribution or your achievement that immediately please look up that immediately suggests to you that god built the system of the kingdom please listen carefully not everything in the kingdom is a gift because a reward is tied to service a reward is tied to contribution a reward is tied to effort and a reward is tied to achievement the difference between a reward and mere giving is that a gift is not predicated on anything necessarily a gift entirely depends on the sense of benevolence of the giver are we together whereas a reward depends on service rendered depends on that means i can be the most benevolent person available but never reward you because you have not done anything that warrants being rewarded i can give you a gift but not a reward are we together now you have to understand that god is both a giver and a rewarder there are many people who will receive gifts from god but never be rewarded they will receive gifts as an expression that is a loving god i give you an instance he sends the rain on both the good and the bad that is a gift it's not a reward the ability to breathe the psalmist said i lay me down and i slept and i wait for the lord sustain me are we together now the ability to breathe and all of these things they are gifts but there are specific things that believers can do that will compel the lord to isolate you and to bless you so lavishly the difference will be clear even among those who are in the faithful 
that this one is not just a gift it is a, re a reward may that be your testimony in the name of jesus so we have distinguished the fact the difference between a mere giving and a reward that reward is tied to service is tied to contribution are we together it's tied to your supporting a cause very intentionally whereas a gift entirely depends on the benevolence of the giver it is possible to give to people who are even undeserving but you never reward somebody undeserving are we together now you can meet someone by the roadside and give the person say 10 naira 20 naira and say young man go and buy something but you cannot give the person salary every month because the difference the similarity is that both of them mandate releasing something but one is tied to effort service that has been vetted scrutinized and approved are we together now because there is a theology around the body of christ that makes it look like because god loves everybody everybody should be in the same state spiritually financially and otherwise you will be learning from this teaching that there are many people who are christians but will never have the opportunity to touch certain level of spiritual sociological financial realities why because some things in the kingdom are not gifts they are rewards if you are with me say amen, amen. it therefore means that you can have two believers perhaps saved in the same church perhaps mentored by the same pastor and yet the possibilities that they command as far as their christian experience is concerned can be east and west now you know that the difference is not just the love of god for them are we together the bible says in matthew 25 we'll be going there shortly i just need to drum this basis for us to understand so that this discussion will profit us maximally so that many of us don't get beguiled with the fact that reward entails giving but that giving is for one who is deserving the bible says in matthew 25 the parable of the talents that the owner of the talent came and met three people are we together then the bible says he gave on to one five talents is that in your bible he gave on to another two talents he gave on to one one talent what was common between all three is that he gave so there was giving but the distinguishing factor was a very silent statement that was written there it says according to their several abilities and you would see at the end of that parable that he was right in allocating it because their level of stewardship justified what he did in the first place are we together let's establish a few things very quickly and then we'll pray so our walk with god is primarily motivated by our love for him our walk with god the believer's experience must be motivated by his love for him but second to be motivated by your love for jesus you are motivated by the fact that there is a reward system that was built in this kingdom you have to understand this that understanding that there is a reward system built in our work with God motivates you it gives you the energy to survive unbearable things are we together nobody remains indefinitely without some incentive that motivates him now what I am teaching you is not only true for God it is also true for men so this is both a human and a divine principle the principle of motivation through reward is not only a divine principle it is also a human principle meaning everything you are learning here is not only spiritual in context alone it can be applicable to every aspect of your life human beings should be motivated primarily by their love for God and their love for men but when that is in place there must be the consciousness of a reward system say amen. amen a woman who is pregnant for instance the day she, they are, she's told that she's with child she already knows that nine months will not be rosy but there is 
a motivation are we together your bible says that who for the joy that was set before him is that in your bible the bible says he endured the cross and he despised the shame so even jesus who is the epitome of love did not hide the fact that he was motivated by something are we blessed now don't tell me to just serve god only because i love him that is a very sincere but destructive theology the kingdom is built around a reward system it is only when my desire to be rewarded or my desire to receive from him now outweighs my desire to love him there is a problem there but when my love for him is in place it is not unscriptural to be open for the reward some of you by reason of this teaching and the prayer you will find out that there are many blessings you have rejected probably through ignorance in a bit to show that you love God you have rejected a lot of things that have been scheduled by God to come into your life I'm glad to announce to you that the the rewarder is also a restorer in the name of Jesus Christ everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you let's walk to a, a few scriptures to establish the scriptural basis for being opened for a reward first samuel chapter 17 were people of scripture so let's walk through a few scriptures first samuel 17 from verse 24 this was the occasion of david and goliath the young teenager called david at the time was sent by his father to go and feed his brothers who were at the war front and the bible says that when david got there he heard a beast of a man called goliath roaring watch this now we're reading to 27 and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, the Bible says they fled from him and they were so afraid. 25. And when the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel, he is come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and give him his daughter and make his father's house free of tax in Israel say reward verse 27 okay now let's go to 26 26 please and David said to the man what shall be done to the man that killed the Philistines in other words I'm not going to waste my energy for nothing as much as I'm an Israelite what what will sponsor the stamina it takes a lot to stand before Goliath if it was easy, everybody would stand there. So what shall be done to the man that kills this? And for this uncircumcised Philistine, the man who will go through the rigor of being courageous, being skillful to endure and bring this man down. 27. And the people answered him after the manner, saying, so shall it be done to the man that killed him. So there are things that are done for people who do certain things. That is not done for everyone. Are we together now? Story number two. I'm hurrying up because of time. My apologies. In Matthew chapter 19. Please give us from verse 27. Matthew chapter 19 from verse 27. We're reading to 30. This is Peter and the disciples now. They had walked with Jesus for a while. Remember that when Jesus called them to follow him, they didn't follow him just because they loved him. They saw a celebrity, an invincible man who was shaking the town at that time. And so they left their fishing and came to him, believing he would give them a better sense of living. And as the days went by, they didn't see him say anything about reward. And they did not hide their feelings. It started as a rumor. Mothers came and were liasing for their children. Eventually, Peter our Peter again Peter broke the ice now let's see what Peter said and Peter said unto him behold we have forsaken all and followed you 
what shall we have therefore? 28. Jesus said, now this is Jesus replying. He didn't say you are carnal, unspiritual, you are not even grateful for the privilege of following me. He knew that the kingdom was built on a reward system. And he said, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, that means not everybody agreed to follow, but since you took the risk to follow me, not everybody will take the risk to be responsible. Not everybody will take the risk to walk in integrity. There has to be a difference. He said, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man, Matthew's synoptic account now, shall sit in the throne of his glory, he says you shall also sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's stop there. He gave them a motivation. And that was the end of the discussion. They said, all right, now at least we know that we can, we are not working for nothing. Do you know the ridicule they would have received for leaving what they were doing to follow this man who did not seem like he was taking them anywhere? There was a time Jesus went up to pray and the disciples took it upon themselves to test the power of God and to pray for an epileptic patient. You see the embarrassment they endured? How could Jesus not motivate them by telling them all of this is leading somewhere? Story number three. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. This is Jesus himself. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus 6 now. It says, who being in the form of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Let's read on 7. It says, but made himself of no reputation. Look what Jesus had to go through. Taking the form of a born servant. Am I doing something wrong? Probably the, feed, the feedbacks in front. Hallelujah. And coming in the likeness of men. Verse 8. It says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Here is the reward. Ready? Therefore, God... This is for Jesus now. God didn't say, well done, you are loved. So find somewhere in heaven and relax. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Those in heaven, those in the earth, and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of the Father. Say, God is a rewarder. Let me give you the last example. Ready for that? 2 Timothy, please, chapter 4, from verse 7 and 8. Why am I taking out time to share scripture? Because it is important that your faith be founded upon the integrity of God's word and not just the opinion of a man. That when you are trusting God to reward you, it's not just because Joshua Selman said it. It's that I have found from scripture that God rewards the last verse I have fought a good fight my goodness I have finished the race I have kept the faith you thought Paul mentoring his son in the gospel Timothy would just stop there Paul did not stop there he said finally there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day good information and not to me only but also to all who have loved his appearing this is in your bible very powerful scripture so we know for a fact that in as much as our ultimate motivation in working with god is our love for him we must find it scriptural to believe and expect that he rewards us whilst we serve him why does God reward men and why do men reward men 
Why is a reward system important in our dealings with God and also in our dealings with men? Paul gave us the answer in 2 Timothy, the, the scripture we just read. Because life is a fight. Life is a race. Life and destiny is a trust. Nobody gets into the boxing ring to fight for nothing. In fact, many times before they fight, the prize is already there. And all of them are seeing it. Both the loser and the winner sees the prize. Are we together now? Life and destiny, verse 7 now, is a fight. That the moment you find yourself on this side of God's kingdom, you are going to fight against principalities and powers. It's a fight to remain for Jesus in a depraved generation. It's a fight to remain in integrity in the midst of opportunities for compromise. And then he says, life is a race. Probably many of us here have been involved in all kinds of marathon races and you do not see someone running for three hours and smiling and rejoicing and singing. There is dedicated concentration sometimes they breathe as though they will lose their breath and die that is the price it takes to run and to finish then the bible says life is a trust there are things god gives you there are many people at the end of their life they gain a lot of things and lose what god gave them for instance your soul he said what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul So God rewards men because he himself as a righteous judge, the righteous king, acknowledges the fact that life is a fight. Life is a race and life is a trust. Now, God designed men to walk by motivation. Are we together? There are many believers today who can stand and die for Jesus like I said earlier, on first before because they love him, but because they also know that there is an assurance that they will be with him. He said to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. That is a motivation. Now, the difference between Joseph and Nimrod, Nimrod the son of Cush, is that one put a motivation in front, whereas the other one put only a dream in front. Nimrod said, come, let us build. Let us build a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. He shared the honor among them. So everyone who would put the brick and mortar knew that I have a stake in this. But Joseph said, I have a dream. Brothers, in that dream, I saw you people bowing down to me. It was all about him and the brother said you will now know that even though you are our brother we cannot support you indefinitely without a stake listen this is not only a spiritual discussion this is an organizational principle that nobody will be part of your program and your project indefinitely until they can find a space to be relevant and to be rewarded in what you are doing hallelujah We lie to people all across the body of Christ. Madam, follow your husband just because you love him. First, just add first. That cannot be the only reason. There has to be a motivation that both of you are going somewhere to achieve something, to raise children that will honor the name of the Lord. That is a motivation. Young man, as you go to school, read. Don't tell him to read just because he loves the Lord. Let him know the difference between a great destiny and a destiny of mediocrity and failure. When you create that template, you will wake up in the night to read. Motivated by that reward system. Hallelujah. Watch this. In the military, there are younger military men who work and aspire, number one, to help the nation. Their primary assignment, they are motivated first by their love for the nation. But they also desire to rise to the highest levels and their motivation is with what is done with generals they see a general whether serving or retired there are benefits and blessings and the young man is encouraged to still stand in the war field and to remain a person of integrity because promotion is a possibility 
Hallelujah. Even in ministry, with the young ones who God is helping, we do it because we love Jesus. But we also do it because we have seen what he has done with those who went ahead of us. He did not leave them in shame. So we know that no matter the embarrassment that comes with bearing the cross, we love Jesus, but we also know that there is nobility at the end of this. Is someone learning already? Now, for the sake of our discussion, I want to show us three things that God rewards because God does not reward everything. Everything has a consequence. Every seed has a harvest. But God does not reward everything. There are many others in the Bible, but I was able to put together three things that God rewards. What does God reward? Number one, are you ready? God rewards diligent pursuit for him and the things of the Spirit. The first thing that God rewards is a diligent pursuit for him and a diligent pursuit for the things of the Spirit. Hebrews 11 and verse 6 already tells us that he that cometh to God must come believing that God exists and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Please say after me, them that diligently seek him. That means when you see a man seeking the Lord, loving the Lord, seeking him in worship, seeking him in prayer, seeking him in fasting, seeking him in the study of the word, seeking him by walking with the company of wise people who love Jesus, the Bible tells you that man's life will not be an ordinary life. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. God loves everybody, but our destinies are not the same. Our destinies are a measure of the rewards that has come into some by reason of their passion and their love for God. A man will not pray two, three hours every day, study the Bible, walk in true holiness and righteousness, and then receive the same reward with someone who is licentious and careless and say it does not matter, it is my life. Don't forget that his throne is built upon righteousness and justice. A student who reads one hour to the exam and a student who is always there in diligent pursuit, even with his knowledge, he will meet people to teach him. Their results will not be the same. Are we together? Even among herbalists and native doctors, their results are not the same based on the degree to which they press into the demonic. There are others, they say this is a powerful herbalist. Why do they call him powerful? Because of the depth of his consecration and his pursuit. We have to be very honest with ourselves to know that seeking God genuinely above money, above titles, above church, above religion, there is a reward to it. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only Lord. I'm seeking you as a precious joy. Not to give up, I'll be near for you. are my only When I began my walk with God, there was no comeliness and nothing to be desired. It was a blind and sincere pursuit. Lord, I love you and I thank you for motivating me and helping me know that if I seek you, you can build a great destiny out of my life. And I brought my life like the content of the alabaster box and poured it before him. Look what he's done today. No one should tell you that God does not reward. The first thing God rewards is the, the sincerity of your pursuit. Hallelujah. So that anybody who tells you this church thing, this Jesus thing, 
does not matter i just need to settle down and know who is who by reason of what you are learning in this conference you can call him and say listen let me tell you in this kingdom when men give god their everything when they pour out their lives as drink offerings to love him to seek him and it's important that god rewards our pursuit for him in the presence of those who know us so that they are motivated i used to know this young man while he used to clean a house near my house you would see him listening to a message while he's mopping as a houseboy to know that today he's a ceo to know that he's the great man of god today you know i meet several people as i travel around the world and some of them used to know me before and most of them will say we knew it i said it's not about me it's about the message that god rewards are we together for someone right now you are in your season of work with god you are pressing into the things of god while others are sleeping you are awake praying while others are roaming around wasting their lives you are there giving yourself to god can i tell you your reward is sure don't be discouraged it may take a while only a foolish farmer plants corn today and by morning is complaining no you give it time motivated by the fact that god swore upon the earth that seed time and harvest please listen listen carefully hallelujah the first thing god rewards is diligent pursuit diligent pursuit matthew chapter 7 7 and 8 jesus was teaching and he said ask and you shall receive he says seek and you shall find i like this one seek seek trouble you will find it seek peace you will find it seek a mediocre life invest into a life of mediocrity you will find it invest into a life of dignity and honor you will find it it says knock when you read the amplified expression it says ask and keep asking seek and keep seeking knock and keep knocking the law is in the next verse for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone who seeks finds ah. as the deer panted for the water so my soul longeth after you for you When the rewarder comes to four square he's not coming to reward members he's coming to reward those who seek him don't say i've been here for a long time uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. rewarding those who love him and would serve him lord my life belongs to you everything belongs to you you are the object of my obsession number two what does God reward? Is someone learning already? God rewards faithfulness. God rewards faithfulness. Anyone who is waiting to enjoy the ministry of the rewarder must be one who is faithful. God rewards faithfulness. In Matthew chapter 25, from verse 14 to 30 we're not reading everything for sake of time this is the parable of the talents the bible says he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one two talents he gave unto one one talent and the bible says then he went on a long journey are we together immediately the person with five said i need to get to work and he went to work immediately and made five more the person with two didn't sit down envying the one with five all of them had peculiar challenges that were 
were associated with their realm. The one with five talents had the challenge of complacency to overcome. He would have said, after all, I have the highest talent here. But it took a greater focus and concentration for him to go and multiply it to five. The one with two would have suffered jealousy and envy and said, why is it not me? He had to shelve jealousy and envy to focus. Then the person with one, you see what the guy did? You now see that the one that was given to him was even messy. Because he was a careless and nonchalant person, very clearly. When the master came back, he called all of them. And now he began to ask them. The person with five said, you gave me five and I've given you another five. Let's see what um, 21 says. Watch this. The Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. He didn't stop there. You were faithful over a few things. He said, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. He said the same thing to the one with two talents. Then the one with one talent came very arrogant like many believers he said i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow so i even did you a favor by not wasting it away i buried it now here is your talent and jesus said you wicked new king james says lazy king james says unprofitable servant that means you did not bring profit to me you are a wicked and unprofitable servant. He said, if you know that I gather where I did not reap, why didn't you go and give serious people like the bankers so that they would do something with it? That means, what did the rest do that you did not see? Hallelujah. Are we together? The second thing God rewards is faithfulness. There are many people admiring estates and mansions and yet the one room you are staying in is not is it does not look like you are grateful to god for giving you that if your one room are we together now you keep is is dirty it's unkept and you say in the name of jesus i know i'll be an estate owner god is love but he's not a fool you prepare for where you are going by being faithful where you are please hear me you prepare for where you are going by being faithful where you are i know god will give me an anointing to raise the dead someday i will speak to nation someday no speak to the two people before you with sincerity and faithfulness pastor the 10 people but nobody will see me to reward me no problem there is an all-seeing eye of this one who calls himself a rewarder even another prophetess who hid in the temple and nobody saw her Jesus made sure in his intelligence that reference was made to her also you never count those who played a role in Jesus's life and ignore that woman please hear me many people are unfaithful you may not be a sinner but unfaithfulness aborts your potential are we together now to experience greater things and greater rewards today by the privilege of God's grace many people see what God is doing through our lives and you know very interesting how many people think we're just lucky and I tell them lucky go and find out the story for many years I played the keyboard for someone who used to have a prison ministry they, they used to preach for they, they were part of the people who went to preach when Obasanjo was in prison. It was my own small keyboard. I carried it by myself and I trekked to a small hotel where they were using it. Never did anybody ever tell me thank you. You may have heard it in my teachings. The only thing I ever got was one bottle of Fanta and one cassette. And yet I did it sincerely because I love the Lord nobody comes out of nowhere it's a joke take throw away all that that superstitious belief when you just because you saw david in front of goliath for the first time 
does not mean that was his first time of fighting I'm saying this because in this season God is coming to this church and there are people whose lives will change overnight don't be surprised don't say they just came out of nowhere find out their participation faithfulness in prayer meetings faithfulness in Bible study even when it's not convenient and God is saying I'm watching you ah, God sees oh God sees One day you will see someone who is a cleaner just cleaning the chairs. The day is time for God to lift you. Someone will come here and say, young man, what are you doing? You are a young man and you are cleaning the church. Yes, sir. What did you study? I studied ABC. Call this number tomorrow. And in two weeks you will hear that he's working in a top oil and gas firm. And people say he was lucky. <clears throat> Listen, when it was time for Isaac to get a wife, when it was time for Isaac to get a wife, the Abraham sent a servant and when he came, he said, Lord, I am praying. Many young ladies come to fetch water here, but I am praying that I will meet the person I meet who is faithful, doing the routine of faithfulness as a woman. Let it be that that is Abraham's wife. As soon as he got there, he met Rebecca at the point of faithfulness. There are many things you lose through unfaithfulness. Let me tell you the truth. You can be free from sin, but if you are not faithful, there are many things you will still lose as though you are a sinner. There are many people today who have qualified for promotion but cannot be promoted because the executives know that by longevity you are here but sincerely is going to be a a minus to that organization to promote you please say after me in the name of jesus i obtain grace to be faithful apostle my own work is just to clean the pulpit do it sincerely as unto the Lord knowing that you are serving the Lord Christ and knowing that your reward is sure my own is to scrub toilets while I'm scrubbing it people will come and be saying all kinds of things don't worry service and faithfulness in service is a deep mystery for rising to untold realms in the spirit run away from people who become great and don't have a track record of service they are dangerous Elisha, a man who carried the double portion of Elijah's anointing. The Bible said he was the one who poured water upon the hands of Elijah. Are we learning? Today, there are many, many families that are willing their inheritance, not to the biological children, but to someone else who is not even connected to them, but has been faithful serving. Faithful serving. Hallelujah. I had the opportunity to pray one time, quite some time ago, for someone to pray on their will. And he gave me an opportunity to read it before he would seal it. And I saw a sizable portion that he willed to someone knowing he had only three children. I said, why did you do this? And he said, this young boy you see, he will take a bullet for me. That if today I'm not, I'm, I trust this boy, more than I trust my own children. The hymn writer says, may the Lord depend on you. May you be so faithful that God can depend on you. No, I, I know that this man is here. He will be faithful. The first thing God rewards is a passionate pursuit, a diligent pursuit for God. The second thing God rewards, and let me tell you the truth, everything that god rewards men also reward in fact the way god rewards is by using men so what is applicable as far as your relationship with god is concerned is also applicable within your work as far as man to man is concerned faithfulness is someone learning in galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 
still speaking about faithfulness galatians 6 and verse 9 the bible encourages us to not be weary in well doing do not be weary while doing good new king james will say it says for in due season we shall reap if we faint not or new king james says if we do not lose heart he encourages you to not be weary in well-doing that means there are times that well-doing does not look rewarding for the short time you can keep doing a lot of things and it looks like people are demeaning you downplaying you maybe this is a word for someone you are saying i'm about to compromise i'm tired i've been a nice person and i've been cheated i would have had two houses today if i just quietly collected the bribe i didn't and god looked at me as if he didn't see me the next time that money comes around the table god you will not be my fault i won't let it pass listen let me tell you the truth it pays to be faithful the rewards of faithfulness does not come every day but the day it comes is areas is accumulated together first corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 first corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 i'll tie up one more point and then we'll pray let a man so consider us as servants of christ and stewards of the mysteries of god paul says next verse moreover he says it is required in stewards that one be found faithful be faithful be faithful the hymn writer again says i'll do as it beats me whatever the cost i'll be a true soldier i'll die When a soldier dies in active service, they give them the gun salutes, even to their corpse, because they were faithful to the end. They kept their vow. Faithfulness. Number three. What does God reward? God rewards are you ready for this God rewards the works of men there are two dimensions to this God rewards the purity of the motivation and God rewards the degree to which you comply to the pattern given to you please pay attention the third thing that God rewards is the works of men God rewards the works of men. He rewards the purity of the motivation and he rewards your degree of compliance to divine patterns. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. The book of Revelation starts in a very interesting way. John is caught up in the Isle of Patmos. He was banished on account of his faith. Bible history tells us. And in the Isle of Patmos, He's given access to the third heavens. Then he begins to document his revelations, captured as the things that were, the things that are, the things that would happen thereafter. When we get to 22 and verse 12, please give it to us. 22 and verse 12. 22. It says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone not according to my love for them according to his work behold have this at the back of your mind that i'm coming quickly and my reward is with me not without my word and that i am here to give to everyone according to his work let me tell you sincerely the works of men will be rewarded there are two dimensions to your work that will be rewarded number one the purity of your motivation that means as god looks at me now from heaven he's not just carried away that i'm preaching here the first thing is he has to vet the purity uh, what is motivating you 
are you preaching just because you love God's people and you want to see the name of the Lord lifted I can come here and preach just because I want fame preach just because I'm trying to make a name for myself the motivation behind the works of men will be tried and number two the degree to which you walk in keeping with God's pattern that means if your assignment was to stand here and you as much as came up here but you stood here it will be rewarded the margin between God's will and where you stood will be rewarded there are many many people who will miss the reward when the works are tried God will say I called you to be a man of God and simply because of the persecution you manipulated your way out and you are something else it will be rewarded first Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 12 this will probably be our final scripture for tonight I want you to pay attention to this point three things I teach you tonight that God rewards number one God rewards passionate pursuit for him and for spiritual things number two God rewards faithfulness at all levels and number three God rewards the works of men please give it to us first Corinthians 3 I begin my reading from verse 12 now if anyone builds on this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay straw uh-huh we're reading to 15 each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is 14 if anyone's work which he has built on it endures he will receive what he will not just receive a reward because he built we have to look at what you built on if you built on jealousy and pride and just the desire to be famous the desire to outshine and pull others the bible says your work will be tried that means there are many things we are doing today and while they are clapping for us when that fire of god's justice blows what will be left will not be a handful as men of god our many preaching apostle joshua selman while you are clapping is only god that knows what is motivating it it can be a carnal mundane pursuit just to make a name and when it is tried you will find out that of the 2000 preaching only five were preached from a pure heart that is the reward you will get let's finish that scripture please if anyone's work is burned he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved at yet through fire so it's not about being a good or bad person the purity of your work while you were working in church father it is an honor for me to clean this place for the man of God to come and bless his people it's a privilege to be part of your house and God is seeing it someone else can come and walk and you say he's the most hard-working person that is true based on your perspective but it's only God that knows how many times he insulted the pastor before he said yes sir when he came it's been recorded in heaven yes sir did I do my best to live for truth did I live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will be only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Let me tell you the truth. I made up my mind as a man of God knowing this. Whether it is to talk to one person or a stadium of people, little children or wealthy billionaires, my passion does not vacillate. It remains the same because I am serving the Lord Christ and as far as I live I will give him my best if in the process of serving him our life ends while serving him it is still gain but as long as he's granted us breath 
that will serve him with everything we've had. Believers, please hear me as I prepare to round up. It is safe to know that God is a rewarder. But for someone, the way you are living your life now, there is no reward for you for sure. Because God cannot count on you. There is nothing about your life today. Listen, I learned this in my walk with God. Before God marks you, he must find out how your money, your influence, your knowledge, your beauty, anything that does not contribute to the revelation of Jesus, to bring him glory, to draw souls to him, to transform lives and nations from God's perspective is a total waste. Don't tell me you are beautiful. Show me how your beauty becomes a tool to reveal Jesus. Don't tell me you have money. Show me how your money, like Joseph of Arimathea, can buy Jesus a grave site so that we'll say, Oh, grave, where is your sting? Don't tell me you are a man of influence. Show me how your influence contributed in a church getting land, contributed in securing a stadium for the gospel to be preached, and to better the lives of people. Nothing in itself is valuable except and unless it is connected. God's program. This is a very powerful message tonight. You can know you are living a, a life that deserves to be rewarded when you spend your life seeing that everything about your life, God gives you 10 naira and you say, listen, 10 naira may not be able to buy fuel for the generator, but I can buy two rags to help the sanctuary keepers. God is seeing that motivated by your love. Now he rewards you by opening a greater door. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, oh Listen, let me tell you how powerful a king rewards. Once upon a time, it was a king's birthday and a prophet was in prison. A woman wanted the head of that prophet, but she did not have the power to fight. And a young girl came before the king and impressed him by dancing in a way. She responded to his will and desire. When kings are happy, clear the way for them. They can do anything. What demons and principalities and powers could not do, what strong men and scribes could not do, a little girl's dance before the king was what removed the head of a prophet. Don't tell me you are small. Serve the king and see what the king can use you to do. Don't say, I don't have the money to give. Pray for your pastor in the place of intercession every day and say, Lord, that is my little contribution. It's like dancing before the king. When kings are happy, they will say, what do you want? The king said, even to half of my kingdom. And she went to a wicked woman to advise her. And the woman said, thank you for clearing the way. The message is that it is service that opened that door. Can I tell you the truth? There are many people today as I round up. I hope I didn't waste your time. There are many people today that no matter how stubborn their children are, they will always find favor and find help. Do you know why? Because some of their parents, when they were young, they had a little boy's quarters and they kept missionaries there. They didn't have the power to preach in crusades. But every time they hear that a missionary is coming to town, it is their cooler that they'll put food for the missionary. And one day the man said, before I leave, I stand upon this place. Madam, your children's children, a man of God will also come out of that person. Listen, that may have happened in 1971. Now by 2000, you have a stubborn child who will not listen to you or anybody. He does not know that the rewarder is determined to keep his vow. One day, what you could not do, what your husband could not do, that covenant of serving the purposes of God, 
that young man will enter inside one crusade maybe drunk maybe angry and fire falls upon him and that boy will become a man of god there are missionaries today who have died but their words upon your life is still speaking let me tell you something if you are here and you have spent your life serving god and living for God and it looks like all you have seen around your life is reproach maybe from children maybe you are not doing well and others are even laughing at you and saying this your Christianity has not spoken hear me the rewarder is on his way yes sir mama what you what you suffered for to make sure your children went to mission schools you didn't wear a nice dress to give them an opportunity I tell you both with God and man your reward is coming your reward is coming a very simple statement that the man of God made that blessed me so much congratulations by the way on your 20th anniversary congratulations Hallelujah. Did you hear what he said? Many of you did not pay attention to what was said. That whilst this, this branch was started, they were doing the plaster and at the same time painting. That is a level of passion that is unusual. And God was watching. And he said, 20 years later, you will still be standing. Please hear me. There was a man in the Bible called Abraham. God mandated and instructed that Abraham would take his only child and go to a mount that he would show him and offer as a burnt offering. The Bible says Abraham arose early. It was not convenient. He got up. The, do you know what it means to drag the child after waiting for over 25 years? I wonder what he was going to tell Sarah at his return. That would have been the end of his marriage but he was still willing to risk it and he took Isaac cut the long story short when he showed God he could give everything God now swore a blessing he said Abraham I swear by myself that in blessing I will bless you please hear me do not claim Abraham's blessings until you claim his passion if you are the children of Abraham he said you will do the works of Abraham. There are people who are untouchable, not because they are anything in themselves. They are so useful in the program of God. God's jealousy defends them like a shadow. Are we together? Yes. That when you sit down and you are planning evil in the secret, before the plan is executed, the rewarder himself says, no, this is a reed I have taken out of fire. Don't come to this family. Every missionary has eaten because these people are alive. How dare you come to take them in the name of cancer? How dare you come to take them in the name of any sickness? Please hear me. In this end time, those who are going to survive are those who will plunge themselves into the program of God. Not everything you will receive in your Christian experience is a gift. Do not forget this teaching. A gift depends on the benevolence of the giver irrespective of the attitude of the receiver but a reward depends on the contribution of the receiver to satisfying the giver whatever you want to do Lord you can do through me whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through me whatever you want to start Lord you can start That you are in politics and you are in governance and you are like Daniel 
saying, Lord, for as long as I am here, I will look for what pleases you and plunge myself into it. And God says, you have vowed to do this for me. Let me see who will stand against you. Oh, I am a man of God. I have vowed that I will be a preacher of righteousness, leading many to Jesus, doing ministry with unbending integrity, regardless the consequence. And God says, you have made this decision. You will be sitting down and God will wake someone and say, give him a car. That house that you are, I told you to give someone. There are many people who will receive the prayer requests of many as gifts and as rewards because they have plunged themselves into the program of God. Four square, my message for you, and this extends also to the body of Christ. Please listen carefully. Your Christian experience is not profitable until it becomes an active contributor towards revealing Jesus and bringing joy and glory to the Father. Don't tell me about your achievements. I'm not interested. Only tell me how they add up to contributing to the program of God. This is where the real value of the believer comes. Your value and your usefulness in the kingdom is not in acquisition. Your desire to be a billionaire only becomes profitable from a kingdom standpoint if you can connect it to kingdom come. Your marriage becomes profitable not just because you have children but that you have used your womb to raise the next prophet, to raise the next apostle, to raise the next visionary leader over a territory. Now God scores your marriage and say this was marriage indeed. There are many people who pride in being rich, respectfully speaking, pride in being influential, and heaven is just watching them and say, as far as you are concerned, your register has not been opened because we have not seen anything that has contributed. Listen, let me speak to the younger people here, the youth here. Make sure your life counts in this church and to the program of God. At the end of your life, you may have heard me say, you will be remembered for two things. The trouble you created, the pain you put for people, or the solutions and the contributions that you made. Paul at the end of his life said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. It is my prayer here at this conference, this 20th anniversary, the first of your, your, um, your provincial, your convocation, your conference here, um, it is my prayer that this tonight, alongside everything you are going to be hearing in worship, in teaching, that it will add to your understanding. God is a giver, and when it has to give it, he gives everyone, because the same Lord is rich unto all. But God as a rewarder does not reward everybody. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are gifts and there are rewards. He that cometh unto God must come believing that he exists and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Please rise up on your feet. Just two prayer points. Thank you for your time. Two prayer points and we're done for tonight. May I please request that you join me as we pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, I am available and I'm usable to bring you glory through my life and through my lifetime. Go ahead and pray. I am available and I am usable. The Bible says, but in a great house, there are many kinds of vessels, vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of wood and of clay. The Bible says some vessels are unto dishonor while some are unto honor. If a man will punch himself, that man will be a vessel unto honor, meat for the master's use. Someone is praying. Lord, in your end time program, spiritually, governmentally, economically, I declare that I am available and usable. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point, and I want you to please pay attention. There was a man in the book of Esther called Mordecai. Mordecai sat at the gate. That was his place of function. Listen carefully. One time Mordecai, by reason of his effective service, he heard two people who were conspiring to kill King Ahasuerus. Are we together now? 
and Mordecai took up that issue reported it to the authorities and the people were brought to justice it was written but Mordecai was not rewarded I'm establishing the next prayer point now the man who saved the life of the king was not rewarded and another side coffin was enjoying his place in the palace called Haman I'm establishing what you are about to pray now and the Bible says one night when a man was already plotting that by the morrow he was going to execute this Mordecai of a man and the Jews the Bible says that same night the king could not sleep and the king said bring me the chronicles and they opened and he saw where Mordecai helped him and was not rewarded and he said what has been done to this man and those who served in the inner chamber said nothing he said who is there and he called the arch enemy of God Mordecai and the Jews he said what should be done to such a man he thought it was him so out of his greed he suggested superior suggestions he said let none fail do this to Mordecai I'm saying this because many of you here have participated in the rising of many politically spiritually economically but then it looks like you have been forgotten Joseph helped the wine presser to interpret his dreams and pleaded that when he was restored back to the king, he should advocate his innocence. The man forgot and for two years, he added Joseph's pain. But when the night came, it always happens in the night. The king had a dream. You are about to pray. Father, I have served you sincerely. I open up for my rewards. Everybody who has been assigned to reward you to bless you for your times of prayer for your times of fasting for your times of service i'd like you to pray that the book of remembrance be open for you tonight is someone praying let the book of remembrance that which archives the services of men let it be opened in heaven for my sake for the sake of my family someone is praying for the sake of my husband for the sake of my wife for the sake of my children service hallelujah hallelujah for some of you in his presence while you just soak and you worship there are battles that you are not even aware of the mighty one even the jealous one will arise from the place of worship and command strange victories for you did Miriam not sing I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its riders have been thrown into the sea I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its riders have been drawn into the sea as you sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its riders will be drawn into the sea this is a prophetic word for someone hey. as you sing unto the Lord uh -huh. for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its riders will be drawn into the sea blessed be your name forever in Jesus name we pray hallelujah before we sit I want you to receive three prophetic blessings that the Lord put in my spirit number one is a prophetic word for open heavens in the name of Jesus Christ I pray over someone let me tell you the implication of an open heavens when the heavens of a man is closed it takes an open heavens for rain to come it takes an open heaven for things to walk. 
in the name of Jesus every force that has closed the heavens over you even as instructed by the Spirit of God man take up a rocas kodiata help them please I decree and declare your heavens open now koinonia your heaven opens now Number one, number two, the Lord put in my spirit to declare, I want you to please listen very carefully, that everything that has been prophesied and has been released but has not found visible expression please receive this one in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I decree and declare between now and the end of this year 2022 I command strange manifestations visible help them please visible manifestations visible manifestations Visible manifestation. When, when Gabriel came to Zechariah and brought a prophetic word, Zechariah doubted Gabriel and he said, I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence of God. You will be surprised at what will happen to you by this word. Let me say the second prophetic word again. Whatever has been hanging in the realm of the spirit and by divination, manipulations of darkness has refused to manifest. I pull it by the power of prophecy. Let it find expression in this realm. Help them please. I pull it from the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning I had a dream. And I had a very strange dream. I saw someone, watch this now. I saw people joining a queue. And entering doors. The same door. But the moment someone enters, it closes. The next person who is coming must have his own key. And I saw some people standing in front of the door. They had keys, but the door was not opening. And then like a man who stood like a guard man will come with what looks like a master key and help them open the door and they will pass. This is the third prophetic word. Based on that dream the Lord showed me. Some of you may not have the keys now, but there are carpenters who have been sent by God as objects of mercy. Every door that you have been struggling to open, in the name of Jesus and by the God who sent me, I declare that door open now. That door open now. That door opens now. Listen, for some of you, while you are in Koinonia here, the physical manifestation of that open door will appear right before the service is done. I am Gabriel, he says, that standest in the presence of God. The most important thing is that the key that opens the door gets into the door. Even if you are not the one holding it, let mercy ensure that the door is open. For in Jesus' name we pray.
Koinonia, God bless you. Good evening. Please be seated. For as long, for as long as God brings you here, I want to assure you, there is no going back the way you came. This, I, I'm, I'm telling you this and to our global family, as uh, it, this, is a, this is a covenant that you should have at the back of your mind. You will never come here and sit down, sing praise and worship and do all of that and then waste your time and then you go back no, no. Ela shalako siata kuskadia. Ela mba shalako siata praskadi balako siata ba kushka Afrika skonia. Enande shalako sabradisia. Inamba shoproskos kani balahashada prakadia da. Sabaruski ata. There are some of you here. God wants to do so much in your life. But God is saying you are interrupting him. You are not allowing him to have the right of way. This is what God is speaking to me. There are some of you, God is saying by now, we are not supposed to be at this level. By now, he would have gone deeper with you. But for some reason, there are distractions. I don't know who I'm speaking to. But right now, everything distracting you from stepping into deeper spiritual levels. I don't care what it is. I clear it out of the way now. Hallelujah. That's my assignment to clear it out of the way. And I clear it out of the way in the name of Jesus Christ. So that you can manifest by the Spirit and rise to your prophetic potential. In the name of Jesus Christ please be seated for those of you who are coming here for the first time you're welcome this is koinonia listen I am telling you that God is doing something new in this ministry there are levels in the spirit there are there are newer gateways you see when you are faithful with what God gives you one of the things that he does is to measure a thousand cubits for you and take you into deeper dimensions of the spirit you can fake power but you cannot fake presence the presence of God is a signature that one is not by grammar when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh, oh, oh. when your glory comes there'll be no words to say Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5. Please be seated from verse 18. Paul was teaching the believers in Ephesus how the character of a man who is under the influence of the Spirit. This leads me into my teaching tonight. He says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess it says but be ye filled with the spirit that means the spirit is not the only thing you can be filled with you can be filled with many other things it says be filled with the spirit verse 19 the biblical evidence that an individual has been full of the spirit is in the next verse 
speaking the moment an individual is full of the spirit there cannot be silence again speaking do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess wherein is excess there are two people here as I'm speaking you don't have to stand the Lord is saying I am bringing strange deliverance to your family this this issue of territorial limitations an embargo that has been placed on families two families it may apply to everybody but two families I am praying right now even as God has revealed to me in the name of Jesus any family that came here and all around your life is shame and reproach and you have been crying and saying Lord when will you come may tonight be the night that God brings deliverance hallelujah verse 19 speaking to yourselves in psalms in hymns and spiritual songs it says singing and making melody in your heart unto the lord so paul is teaching the church in ephesus and he says do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess but that you be filled with the spirit and that the moment you are full of the spirit something will happen to your speaking this is very very important tonight I want to teach you a very deep spiritual principle and it's my prayer that you will understand it and that you will you will produce strange dimensions of results in your Christian experience on the strength of this light that you have koinonia is always a feast of lights where God grants you access to superior spiritual illumination and while you are listening you know by now that it is more than just the speakings of a man are we together according to Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 verse 2 particularly while I am speaking the Bible says the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me so for every word you are going to be hearing there is a spirit component to it that is what empowers that word to find expression in your life hallelujah so the Bible clearly shows us here that the first biblical evidence that a man is under the influence of the Spirit is not falling it is speaking the first biblical evidence in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 the Bible says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all together with one accord in one place verse 2 it says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were sitting is that in your bible and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire the bible says it sat upon each of them verse 4 and they were filled with the holy ghost the next sentence and began to speak and began to speak so every time a man is under the influence of the Holy Spirit the first area that signifies his influence and his presence is the speaking most believers do not understand the life of the Spirit most believers have not been mentored to understand the dynamics of being a spiritual man according to the Pauline epistles he teaches us that there are three kinds of men number one he says there is the natural man one who is not regenerate one who has not encountered Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior number two he teaches that there is one who is called the carnal man that person can be a believer in Christ but he has not exercised his senses unto godliness he has not grown experientially above the grip of the flesh he is carnal sensual that means his impulses 
are not based on the influence of the word of God and the spirit. That person is largely sensual. That means the activities around his life is governed largely by emotions and feelings. Please pay attention. So you are a natural man if you are not in Christ. When you come to Christ through the experience of the new birth, you do not become a spiritual man immediately. Uh -uh. You are born of the spirit. But the experience of being a spiritual man mandates that you move from one who is called the carnal man. Another word for the carnal man is the sensual man. One who is driven by his impulses. The things that you see, the things that you hear, the things that you touch, the things that you feel. The entire circumference, the man is motivated largely by his or her senses. Are we together now? Yeah. Then you graduate to the realm that the Bible calls the spiritual man. And the spiritual man, like you may have heard me say, is not just one who has been in church for a long time, although that can contribute to your spirituality. But a spiritual man is known by two biblical indices. Number one, one who has totally submitted to the authority of the word of God. A spiritual man is one who has submitted to the authority of the word of God in any and all matters of your destiny. Submitted to the authority of the word of God. Not selective submission. You are a spiritual man to the degree to which the word of God becomes your new eyes. The vista from which you see and interpret things. And that your impulses are completely pro scripture number two to be a spiritual man you must have mastered the art of submission in the similitude of a wife submitting to her husband that you submit to the influence and the ministry of the holy spirit so you see that there are many believers that includes preachers that includes businessmen that includes church people who are born again genuinely love Jesus genuinely but we cannot say based on these um, requirements that they are spiritual they have not submitted to the authority of scripture they have not submitted to the authority of the word of God to guide them in every and all matters and then number two they have not submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit It's impossible to be a spiritual man without the ministry of the word and without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. These are the two biblical provisions that translate ordinary men to become spiritual. Are we together now? So Paul in his apostolic um, work would visit the churches, the early church. He would visit the regions and have conferences with them, mentoring and teaching them on various aspects of the kingdom life and in one of his lectures one of his um, discussions some of the discussions he was there in person and some of the discussions he wrote them in letters in fact in many of the discussions he wrote from the prison and sent it to the people to strengthen the believers so one region would read the letter and even grant another region access to it so that they would be strengthened and then he taught us that for a man who is spiritual, listen carefully, in exercising kingdom authority and dominion, there are many things that are important in your life, but that as far as reigning and dominion is concerned, when the spirit of God comes upon you, he influences your entire life, but that his primary place, listen carefully, his primary jurisdiction for your transformation and translation is your words, your tongue, your mouth. It is interesting that out of the many parts of your body that the Holy Spirit can influence, he is interested in a man's words and in a man's speaking. Hallelujah. Psalms 50 and verse 23. Please pay attention. 50 and 23. The Bible says, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, 
And to him that ordered his conversations aright, I will show the salvation. Will I show the salvation of the Lord? To him that orders his conversations aright. That is the person who will see the salvation of the Lord. Two scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 6 and 7, very, very interesting scripture. The Bible says, suffer not, that means do not allow, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Look at that scripture very carefully. Do not allow your mouth to cause your flesh, that is your body. It's an ancient word for body. That means your body, he's saying here, is at the mercy of your mouth. Suffer not your mouth to cause your body to sin. Then he says, neither say thou before an angel, it was an error, I made a mistake. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thy hands? Look at this deep spiritual mystery that your entire body is at the mercy of your speakings and that you must be able to train and culture yourself that you do not stand and say, oh, I made a mistake before an angel. There are consequences, the Bible teaches. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4, the Bible tells us, speaking about the principles of dominion, that where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Now, please look up, believers. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ was designed by God to be a place for the maturity of believers. That means when a believer submits himself to training, to mentorship, to doctrine, among the many things that happen to you is that you will ascend realms in the spirit that will have physical expressions. Your maturity will be seen and known by all that you have encountered God, but that you have also encountered the ways of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You must understand the culture and the modus operandi of the kingdom. If you are to excel and to reign in the kingdom, you're not going to use luck and chance and emotions. There is a way that kings reign. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, and he says we are supposed to reign. Now, many believers talk about the dominion of the saints as kings and priests, and that is true because the Bible says so, and that is the will of God as revealed from Scripture. But the dynamics of walking in dominion as far as our kingship is concerned, many believers have not been taught. And so we have continued to program all kinds of failure and defeat and pain to our Christian experience. Hallelujah. Where the word of a king is, it says there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Some time ago, I, I think I was sitting quietly, you know, in the living room and sometimes I just have a few minutes for myself and I could just scroll down channels to see what is happening. And I stumbled across a documentary, don't, I can't remember what nation, and that documentary, it was a research about a group of people. In fact, the study showed that many Many localities in Africa have that, that, um, that kind of setting where they call them rainmakers. Hallelujah. So that these rainmakers are a group of people usually in many cultures who have through decades perfected the art of manipulating climates. Are we together now? So that they can make a climate through divination 
or through whatever it is you find those people according to the research in many parts of africa nigeria especially kenya several regions and for some of them when you meet the priests and the mediums they will tell you that this has been a practice for hundreds of years passed from one generation to the other so i think the documentary um, brought people to record them so that they would cause rain to fall and so they would say a lot of things chant a lot of things and according to eyewitnesses as they interviewed them they said they could make a bright sunny day in a matter of minutes be heavy with clouds and then begin to bring rain down many years ago I schooled in a place where it was purported that they had the power to hold rain and I saw it myself on their market days you would see the cloud thick it will be ready to rain but rain will never come they will hold the rain up until 1 or 2 a.m. when everybody has gone home then there will be such an avalanche for no reason this happened many times at least I was a witness meditating and preparing this teaching i thought about these people called rainmakers and it really really occurred to me that the believers experience as far as dominion is concerned is in the similitude of these people called rainmakers even though this is by a demonic agency but that these supposedly weak men have been able to access the windows of the realm of the spirit and that they could use enchantments and divination to do something to a physical climate and make rain to come are we together now and then they could do something again and while I was meditating the Holy Spirit took me and said no you don't need to worry about the rainmakers go and read about Elijah Elijah was an authentic biblical rainmaker that the man stood by prophetic authority and spoke over the heavens not in a radio station not in the presence of people who you know walk in all of these this this climate agencies he made a decree to the heavens and he said that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years and look how intimidating that statement was because no matter who you were you could pray and shout and God would say it's not my fault Elijah has spoken it would be unwise to believe nobody else spoke and said but God show mercy Elijah had spoken and after three and a half years Elijah came back again and said this rain is going to come back and the Bible says he prayed and prayed and prayed and he saw a cloud like a man's fist and he told Ahab saddle your chariot and be on your way I hear the sound of the abundance of rain physically there was nothing like that but from the realm of the spirit that was a real rainmaker and the king went and the Bible says that he girded his loins and he ran on barefoot he overtook the, uh, the the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel listen if people can use divination and program a climate physically not consulting you whether you are in agreement with them or not they don't ask everybody in the village democratically are you ready for rain or not no no a few people have done business with the realm of the spirit and they can agree and manipulate the cloud physically that means it is within every believers jurisdiction are we together to program a climate of spiritual possibilities over yourself such that no matter what is happening in Egypt Goshen can be different you can program a climate of rainy season even in dry season are we together now but there is a secret that in this kingdom believers and kings must understand the power of words 
and the power of speakings as far as programming spiritual climates are concerned. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 14, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 14, the Bible says, A man shall be satisfied with the good, okay, satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Is that in your Bible? And the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. That means a man's satisfaction does not just come from his job. A man's satisfaction does not just come from your mind alone. The Bible says a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Are we together? In Proverbs chapter 18, let's read 20 and 21. Most times people just go to 21 but they don't read 20. Let's read 20 together. Proverbs 18, 20, 21. Ready? One to read. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips. Ah. With the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Then 21 now. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof they that love death shall benefit from it through their mouth they that love life shall benefit from it he said they that love it it gives you the option but it says you will eat the fruit thereof for sure please look up when we began our experience with god our faith work with god one of the many things that we were taught and gracefully we were taught early was the prophetic implication of the speakings of a believer. Now, most believers have not been trained to understand that the realm of the spirit was designed with words. Are we together? It took words to frame the entire earth. That means the earth only responds to words. Because you see, you look like who and what gave birth to you. If it was words that gave birth to you, then words will have to sustain you. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things that are visible or do appear. Words. John 1, 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made all things not some things were made by him and outside of words was not anything that was made there are many believers who do not know that when the Spirit of God came into your life it's not just that he wants to make you a man and a woman of character in as much as that is important your dominion principally depends on your mastery as far as speaking is concerned that there is a relationship between your ability to speak prophetically and in sync with the word and the will of god and your manifestation many believers have found themselves programming eels the bible says do not cause your flesh your body to sin because of your mouth hallelujah now every culture i know of and every region i know of among the many things that unite people within that culture is language we learn that in social studies is that true that one of the binders of regions is language we call it tongues or tribes so when we say you are yoruba it means there is a speaking there may be other aspects of the culture, but the most visible aspect that brands people, culturally speaking, is their speaking. Do you agree with me? There may be other things, facial expression, physiology, you know, history, and all of that. But the principal way you know a Yoruba person is through speakings. The principal way you know an Igbo person, the principal way you know a Nigerian, an American, is through words. The tongue is a revealer. That means just by listening to someone, 
I can write so many things about that person without even meeting him physically. Are we together? If it is true that language reveals culture, then it means the kingdom itself should have a culture and a way to communicate. That if I hear you speak in a certain way, the same way I can look at you and say, are you Yoruba? There, there is a kind of speaking. Are you Hausa? Are you from South South? Are you from this region? There is a way a believer should be able to speak that immediately a fellow believer hears, you know that this is a child of God. You don't need to start probing and say, are you born again? That may be important, but I'm saying the language should already reveal culture. When a Nigerian meets another Nigerian in America or Europe, aside from the physical physiology, as soon as the person begins to speak, the intonations, the accent, he says, you are my brother and my sister. And immediately, total strangers, they shake themselves with respect to that foreign environment. Most believers have not been trained that as a believer in Christ, your speakings reveal many things, but more importantly, your speakings program many things. Even science and technology today, as they continue to advance, they are getting to the realm of possibilities through the spoken word. Is that true? So all kinds of gadgets now do not need to be mechanically manned by hand again. They respond to speakings and they call it technological advancement. So you stand in front of a door and say open and it opens. You stand in front of this and you can program all kinds of things just by words. If science finally agrees with the faith life that words are important, then you must pay attention to it. Because there are many people right now, the snare that you have found yourself in, it did not just come by a demonic agency alone. It came because of your ignorance, knowing that every word that you speak has an effect in the realm of the spirit that will work for you or will work against you. If we are together, say amen. amen. So the Bible says we are satisfied by the fruit of our lips. The second thing I want you to know about cultures and regions is that among the many things that bind people sociologically are cliches and certain communications that they could be slangs, they could be all kinds of linguistic expressions, are we together, that bind people within a territory. When you come to Nigeria, there are words that when you use, every Nigerian understands what you are saying now. Growing up, there's something they call yabin. Pay attention, don't miss this now. Laugh, but let your concentration still be here. Are we together? So what happens is two people will sit down just like they are playing chess, and then they will look for the most demeaning, insultive, funny, and ego tearing description and land it on that person then the other person waits for his turn and so they usually are spectators who keep assessing by their laughter and their commendation who is funnier and who is being demeaned the more we have those kinds of expressions in our world and while in many cases it was intended to be a joke there are many people who do not know that demon spirits and familiar spirits are some of the sponsors of some of these linguistic things that have rested upon regions that people have received sociologically. Are we together? I don't die, finish. Does that sound like something you say all the time? And while you are saying it, the person you are talking to understands and the realm of the spirit too understands their version of what you are saying. And it is recorded in the realm of the spirit. There are many things we have been trained to say. There are regions in this nation where 
the only way to show that you are pious is to express mediocrity at you can use words and tear yourself down the moment that happens people feel that you are pious we have embraced some of these things and we do not know that these have been the programmers remember the rainmaker teaching that for every time we do these things we feel it does not matter there are children parents who give birth to children and begin to call them certain names big head idiot where are you and the boy says sir for 10 years that boy was answering idiot by the time the guy gets to 11 years you have programmed a kind of rain what begins to happen to the guy his brain his thinking his creativity deflates to reflect the power of your word and now you begin to wonder why are you such a dull and a stupid child how about the teachers that train children in school many people do not understand the power and the implication of words there are children who go to school and they begin to hear all kinds of things demeaning statements from teachers maybe from their colleagues maybe and they do not know that is programming i'm not just speaking psychology spiritually are we together and destroy themselves and put themselves in positions of failure and then we say it does not matter and the realm of the spirit keeps recording it keeps recording it let me tell you the truth in this kingdom ladies and gentlemen kings reign by the dexterity and the excellency of their speakings the bible teaches us to beware what we say the moment the holy ghost is upon you there is power upon everything you say do you know one of the reasons why the gift of faith among the nine gifts of the spirit revealed the gift of faith does not rest upon people indefinitely it comes and it goes you know why because under the influence of the gift of faith anything you say will come to pass and if the gift of faith remains with you and you are angry and you tell your wife may God punish you and may you die you just meant I am angry and you see a dead body fall in front of you did you not read about um what's the, the name now those guys at um Ananias and Sapphira you have lied against the Holy Ghost bam right there the wife came and did her own right there two of them they carried their dead bodies hours apart where the word of a king is there is power so while you were declaring this Abuja self is a useless place a stupid place this place I don't know what kind of place is that the realm of the spirit receives those words in vials and programs them into a climate now please I want you if you don't believe this you are not a Christian the realm of the spirit is strict on speakings especially when the anointing comes upon you hallelujah Jesus made certain profound statements among them he said destroy this temple and after three days I will build it Jesus himself knowing the power and the prophetic implication of words words do not only reveal culture words program climates words program spiritual climates they can program a climate of possibilities they can program a climate of impossibilities many believers have found themselves saying a lot of things and saying it does not matter this is how i this is how we speak in nigeria they say this is how we speak in uk they say hallelujah there are regions of the world where they call people they name them by animals and they say it very wonderful oh you are a dog they they say that to mean you are my friend you are my close ally you don't have to call me a dog to show the level of our friendship just just my opinion are we together and we answer some of these things no wonder we start behaving like them words the moment you begin to speak 
remember you are a spiritual rainmaker if i would use that expression you are programming something upon your life in israel for those of you who have had the opportunity to travel to israel historically even up until today when you curse somebody it is a very big issue in israel you know why because they were trained there from judaism they understand the power of the spoken word when fathers want to bless their children they don't give them physical things they call them and from the depth of their spirits they release prophetic words what are they doing programming their climate you see that from abraham to isaac from isaac to his sons why do you go and meet a man of god and you say sir bless me and while you are saying bless me you are even putting your head down what exactly do you expect to happen he is not releasing anything physical it's not his saliva you want to come on your head yet you are happy and he says may god bless you you lift your hands and your head and say amen and you actually believe you received something are we together words are so powerful it took words for you to be saved not just intention not just motive wishing to be saved was not enough to change you you had to use words to verbalize your interest in god declare your helplessness and to ask for his grace and his mercy words are powerful genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 the bible says in the beginning from verse 1 god created the heavens and the earth then verse 2 says the earth was without form please look up the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep i have taught you that theologically speaking we call this the gap theory there is still a lot of haziness between 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2 because it is believed to be many years apart. It is believed that this confusion right here came as a result of the judgment of the then earth. Are we together now? It says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3. Now the surprising thing is that God never discussed the issue of the darkness when god looks at a chaotic situation it was only fair enough for him to at, at least analyze okay spirit of the living god i can see darkness i can see chaos i can see this destruction however we are going to fix it mm -mm. the first statement that he would make is light p and the bible says there was light the bible never said darkness fled he says there was light because he did not mention darkness what he called was what gained the emphasis there in that statement there was light immediately when it was time to make man here comes words again let us make man my question is did he have to say it when he had the power to do it i understand speaking light but i mean did he have to say i will do it then start doing it it was wise enough for him to just make man but he said listen this is what we are going to do he spoke it and he did it the same principle you find in genesis 11 when nimrod the son of Cush, was going to build they already had the materials brick for mortar and slime they would have just started the building but they kept they kept speaking we are going to build are we together now words are very powerful words are not only informative words are creative that means when you speak you are not only speaking for awareness please believers hear me you are not just speaking for enlightenment you are also speaking for creation creation in this kingdom happens at the instance of words that means the believer who is the creator is one who knows how to use words not just to inform people of what you are doing this is one of the reason why names are powerful because names are not just a means of identification names are prophetic words every time people call your names and speak it they are creating something or enforcing what has been created no wonder Jabez changed his name no wonder Simon you know changed his name God had to change Abraham's name to Abraham because prophetic speakings 
are very powerful it was at the instance of our speaking through worship that the presence of God mantled this place and things began to happen imagine when you come for service someone sits down quietly and then a prophetic word comes and at the instance of that word something begins to change that means that thing could change but that which makes it change was not yet spoken please understand this and you will find out that the results you will begin to command in your life will surprise you are we together say not before an angel I made a mistake in Matthew chapter 12 from verse 34 and 35 please give it to us Matthew 12 34 and 35 Jesus is rebuking the people now and he says O generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good things aha uh -huh. he's taking it a step further now to help us understand that while it is true that your speaking is what creates controls and manages your spiritual climate there is something about your state and your speaking your being is where your speaking comes from are we together now he says oh generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good that means if you are evil you will speak evil if you are good you will speak good your speaking will always be a reflection of your nature being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart Jesus is teaching us now how how words are framed and formed before spoken out of the abundance of the heart he says the mouth speaketh that means the mouth does not speak until the heart is full when the heart is empty the mouth cannot speak but when the heart is full inevitably the mouth will begin to speak 35 it says a good man who is that man a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring it forth what so good man good heart good things then he says an evil man out of the evil treasure bring it forth evil things please I want you to follow very carefully there are many believers who when they teach about speakings and the power of words as a dominion principle they do not focus on the heart condition they just say change your confession and don't speak negatively and while that is sincere the bible tells us that as powerful as your mouth is your mouth your body is a slave to your mouth while your mouth is a slave to your heart so the most powerful part of you is your heart your heart controls your mouth and your mouth controls your body so when the devil wants to destroy your body he does not just focus on your mouth first he goes to your heart are we together now and plants seeds of fear seeds of defeat seeds of death seeds of mediocrity seeds of limitation from the abundance of that heart the mouth will start programming a spiritual climate that has a physical implication job said the thing that i feared has come upon me it started with his heart then to his confession the wife looked at him and said why don't you curse god and die her heart was her mouth was only a revelation of what was in her heart so when you look at your wife or your husband and say you are a stupid and useless man the problem is not what you said and the answer is not sorry the answer is transformation are we together because sorry can be a borrowed word that you can use the real problem is that that speaking when you look at your son and say you are a useless boy you will never become anything you are a foolish girl you are a prostitute and many people Africa we are victims of these kinds of things people become angry and they speak and program destruction over their children over their subordinates over the people around them and they wonder why the continent remains the way it is 
Israel is a place that is in a desert and yet in that desert everything grows because they understand the power of speakings you get there the first thing you hear is Shalom the peace of God rests upon you the children have been trained in other religions of the world even before a little child starts going into the regular schools with any kind of means and by all means they program certain things into their hearts first hallelujah most believers have not been trained to understand the power and the value of words and the key is not to mechanically speak well please look up this is what i want to correct you do not speak well just by intention your speaking is a product of your heart condition and your state so you find people who carry a semblance of being cautious bless you good morning and then the moment something pushes you your heart pushes away your brain and brings out what is really there don't talk to me or just because i'm in koinonia here you don't know who i am go and ask those who know me and then people become like wild animals and later you go back and then you say sorry it will not happen again and your heart says you are joking are we together out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks it says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart that means the man is not good is good because of the state of his heart people are not evil because of what they do people are evil because of who they are an evil man even if an evil man speaks good is still an evil man eventually the heart will betray him is someone learning now this is very powerful Africa let me tell you the truth Nigeria please listen to me now I'm somebody who is very real I understand politically the climate is not very favorable I understand economically the climate is not very favorable but our mandate is not to keep enforcing the darkness in our environment by sowing our own contribution of darkness what we are seeing in this nation what we are seeing in Africa is a cumulative of everybody's contribution I know you will not like what I'm saying but don't make a mistake of standing in self-righteousness to believe you did not contribute anything the stupid boy that you said added to the climate the wicked woman you said added to the climate. The realm of the spirit has an assignment of gathering the words and building the climate. And we have become negative rainmakers over our destinies. There are regions that have alienated themselves and say from this village, nobody rises up to go here. We are all failures. And they did not know that they were prophetic rainmakers. There are many business people, even in Abuja here, who have said, I can't succeed, I can't rise, don't worry. And while you are saying it, you think it does not matter. Everybody here listening to me, you are a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny. If there has been drought and darkness over your life, I want you to know that there is something you are neglecting. You are a king, but you do not understand the power of your scepter, your crown, and your words. Hallelujah. So this is how I'm going to die. This is how my life is going to be. So I will not get any job in this Abuja. I will not get job in this Nigeria. In fact, it looks like doors will not open up for me. Let me tell you the truth. You can run anywhere to the world. If it's still the same you, it's the same result that will follow you there. Are we together? There are things you will never hear me say about myself. There are things you will never hear me say about this ministry. There are things you will never hear me say about the body of Christ. Please listen to me. This is more than positive confession. We are talking of the mystery of creation. Becoming a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny. That you can stand and in the name of Jesus when you understand this. You can lay your hands on your womb. And you can begin to declare no arm robber comes out of this womb. And while you are speaking the realm of the spirit. There is a system of documentation happening. 
Hallelujah. Many people said all kinds of negative things about their lives. For me, I have chosen that my vista and my template will be that which is consistent with the word of God. It does not matter my background. It does not matter where I came from. It does not matter who I know or I do not know. I understand that the dominion, the mystery of exercising kingdom authority demands I will never you won't hear me say oh I'm leading a stubborn people I'm no 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 I won't do that look at the character of God he appears to Gideon a man who is hiding and the first thing he should do is Gideon you are such a foolish young man come out of that place of hiding first this is God now and he says so now has it helped you mm -mm. oh mighty man of valor that means every negative thing you have been hearing about yourself is not God. You can, you can use this to know who has been talking to you. Hallelujah. Is someone learning now? Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any creature that was found in the garden. Please pay attention. He said, he said to the woman, yea, had God said, ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. Next verse. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest you die. Listen to Satan now. Satan heard what God said. Now he's about to speak. He understood the power of the, the creative power of the speakings of men. The serpent said, ye shall not surely die. Five, for God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse six, look at what immediately began to happen to the woman as a result of the words. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, her perception started changing at the instance of that word. And a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. Seven. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Verse eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. I like verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam and said, Adam, where are you? You know what this means? Where are you does not mean physically where are you. In the realm of the spirit, the words that I spoke over you secured you. There was a position of authority that could be seen in the realm of the spirit. But something happened on earth through words. Now we don't see you again. He doesn't mean where are you hiding in the garden. You have, you have fallen from a position, an ascended position in the spirit. Where are you? Verse, nine, verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice. In the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself never forget verse 11 for the rest of your life and he said who told thee that thou was naked keep that question there who told you that you will never get a very good man to marry you uh-huh I've said somewhere that touched you now <laughs> Look up. Who told you that they've forgotten your application? I'm not sure my application. Who told you? Do you know what God is saying here? Everything that enters your heart came through words. That's what he's saying. It is impossible for it to have gotten to your heart. The only vehicle that carries convictions to your hearts are words. Who told you? I'm seeing a reaction within your heart. 
and I'm telling you that how we got there was not through assumptions. Words have a way of transporting realities from this physical realm. You can hear it through your ears, but it does not stop there. It steps into your mind and finally settles in your heart and begins to program that climate. You become a negative rainmaker programming all kinds of destructive things who told you you are a failure who told you you are not a beautiful lady who told you you are not a handsome guy who told you you are a lazy person who told you you cannot become that prophet who told you you cannot become that great woman who told you your region is a disadvantage you had someone tonight God is speaking to someone you have been hearing many people it's time to hear me you have been hearing the voice of culture you have been hearing the voice of limitations you've been hearing the voice of the devil and even familiar spirits who told you who told you who told you you cannot rise to become that man of god that woman of God who told you you cannot raise children to be great and champions who told you because you came from a background that does not seem to have any comeliness around it that you cannot become a great person God is speaking to someone here someone speakings has entered your heart do you know let me tell you this words are so powerful ba. you can hear something in 2001 and think you are free from it and it can remain quietly there it just needs to stand near the door of your progress and remain there you are a useless lady you will not go far and you mean oh no in the name of jesus i i i don't believe what you are saying he still entered and every time you want to rise you hear that voice again you will not amount to anything listen this is where the implication of influence comes in. And let me respectfully at this juncture just challenge parents, men of God, politicians, or people who are occupying any position of influence. We have to be careful with our communications. I know we are humans, but we must obtain grace from God. You may never understand the implication of your wrong speaking to your child in anger you just told him you are an embarrassment to me i thought you were going to get first class it is terrible to know you have two two or even two one shame on you the child may keep quiet but you have programmed a stumbling block a familiar spirit keeps thanking you for one year for making his job easy he comes to land on that word and you deflate the child's passion wanting to rise to a new dimension he says there's no use do you know why the believer is mandated to study scripture for many reasons but among them this is the manual that programs your heart so that from your heart through your mouth you now program your climate is someone understanding this now can i tell you the truth there are many people who died listen carefully many people who died simply because of the ill speaking of others i think i was reading about a, a research that was done on patients that there are patients who when they are sick and in bed if their family members come to surround them you know and encourage them there's a lot of laughter that chances are excellent that they can even live longer even survive that ground do you know why people die in the night because in the night there's full of silence someone can be encouraging you by seven eight nine and then by one two you only hear the voice of darkness and the devil comes through that darkness you are still alive are you not surprised take your last breath and go there are people who would have died since they refused they're nowhere they were sick and sick there from a physical they just said no way there are people today who certain negative things would have come upon them they refused 
they said in the name of Jesus for as long as I am alive I owe myself that responsibility the rain that comes is the rain I create and let me tell you the truth if you are not creating it someone can help you and I pray that it's not a negative climate they create for you so you find out that the rain of failure the rain of disappointment the rain of closed doors coming upon you and you are wondering what is this what is happening to me only to know that while you slept in the dream that you had someone was speaking negatively as soon as you woke up a negative demonic movie was playing adding to the programming again and then you get up in the morning from your house through the junction to your office you have received one year worth of negative programming you're driving and somebody sees you and the person just looks at you and from afar the person is already stretching his hands towards you and adding words on top and you too you say okay pack pack and let's and all, all you, you are programming climates the wise understand the power and the value of their environment are we together do you know why the Bible says, give us Ephesians 5 now, you will understand. It told you that when you are full of the Holy Ghost, there are three things that the Holy Ghost will make you say. Ephesians 5, 20, 19. Ephesians 5, 19, please. Let's hurry up, give it to us. Speaking to yourselves in number one, Psalms. I leave that one for next year most of you do not know the power of psalms you see these psalms you see is a mystery that man called david psalms he says when the holy ghost comes upon you how do you think david wrote psalms by intelligence no the holy ghost came upon him and he found himself writing things the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of are we together now the Lord is the strength of my life what can man do to me so that confession called Psalms was inspired by the Holy Ghost and he said you can verify the spirit that is influencing you by what you are saying if the Holy Ghost comes upon you you will find yourself speaking Psalms Psalms the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he guides me in the path of righteousness for his namesake psalms yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you call it confession the bible calls it psalms understand what i'm teaching you now that every time you are under the influence of the holy ghost what he does to you is he makes you to begin to speak to yourselves in psalms number two hymns you see eh? do you know why these hymns don't die there are many songs that are dead they wrote them last year they are dead by now before december because the depth in the spirit from which they were fetched it was it was not anything serious some of these hymns you will see 1890 something now, of course, there may be some scriptural errors because it was men that wrote it. But let me tell you the truth. Hymns, it does not just mean SS and S alone. It's a prophetic statement. These people that wrote hymns, you see, they were not just musicians. They were inspired of the Holy Ghost. Is someone hearing now? Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drop round us are falling, but for the shadows. When you were growing up, you used to sing it, but now that you have become a matured African, you left what can lift you. I'm not just saying it must be chanting it, but most people do not know that they have been negative rainmakers to their lives because they have ignored the power of Psalms speaking to yourself in psalms in hymns my hope is built on nothing less than jesus Christ and righteousness i 
Oh, you still remember? On Christ the solid Please listen, let me tie up something I'm teaching you because what I'm teaching is very powerful. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking, speaking in psalms, speaking in hymns. Then you get to this third dimension, speaking in Speaking in psalms, speaking in hymns, speaking in spiritual songs. They are not just special numbers. You hear me say, You ring, you ring, hello, you ring, you ring, you ring. What is that? Yeah. Ask Sam who wrote the song that when it came to him, is that his language? Did you not hear the Bible says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, there are communications that do not belong to this realm, but are needed in this realm. Are we together now? Tongues is one of them. That when someone begins to pray and you are now even praying in tongues, it does not make sense. But the Bible says you are reacting to the influence of the Spirit. And although men may not understand, there is a programming happening in the realm of the Spirit. Spiritual songs. Hallelujah. listen then the bible says something very interesting it's saying making melody in your heart in your heart how do you do that your heart has a voice is that true she said to herself if i may but touch the hem of his garment Say not to yourself, who shall ascend? Listen, let me tell you this. These are simple but profound mysteries. Paul would not gather in front of God's people and be wasting their time teaching them jargons. These were the ladders that he followed himself to ascend these realms of strange power. Speaking to yourself in Psalms. Psalms means Psalms. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over the city, they watch it in vain. When the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion. Hold on. That means at any point in your life, you begin to sense, you know how people sorry for the use of words you know how people throw up something within is what causes it isn't it you start feeling you want to throw up that is how it is in the spirit Shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. a background where no one 
man has risen show me a man surrounded by failure causes poverty but then you know how to be filled with the spirit that the moment the presence of God comes don't keep quiet the next thing is to begin to speak to yourself in Psalms speak to yourself in hymns and spiritual songs prophetic rainmakers creating a climate of favor a climate of glory a climate of grace a climate of longevity a climate of power a climate of possibilities listen hear me hear me many years ago when this ministry was at its infancy I made a prophetic statement by the Spirit and I said we will all be great and that the greater part is we will all know ourselves it was not a suggestion it was a prophetic word that came from the depth of the Spirit hallelujah what are you saying in your house or what is speaking in your house sometimes you are not the one saying it but you are allowing demonic atmospheres around your house negative atmospheres let me tell you this i'm sure it has happened to someone where you are soaking yourself in an atmosphere of worship or a message and then you fall asleep and you find out it still continues with a stronger atmosphere of power and sometimes you wake up under such an intense influence Adam who told you what have you given permission to speak into your life who have you allowed to program your thinking to program your mind to alter you dear prophet of God who did you start listening to that you stop believing in yourself what did you start listening to that suddenly made you all rules to become a weak person words make strong and words make weak words make wise and words make foolish words bring power and words bring limitations Listen, let me tell you this. When I get up in the morning, sometimes I walk around room to room. Every room in my house is an altar. I don't care whether it's the toilet, whether it's the bathroom. You know, you can have designated places, but it does not matter where. Sometimes the revelation you need can come in the kitchen. You are washing your plates but there is an atmosphere. Shani Salika And the Spirit of God says now, call that person immediately and you make that call and the person says, you are a spiritual man. I've been, I was just trying to call you and that begins a new season in your life. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the truth? Do you know why many people go to bed and several people have negative demonic atmospheres because they do not pay attention to invest in atmospheres over over seven or eight years ago I preached a message called the law of atmosphere everything that happens on earth is atmosphere dependent destruction is atmosphere dependent breakthrough is atmosphere dependent the growth of your plant agriculturally speaking is atmosphere dependent that means you kill things not by killing them you kill things by taking the atmosphere i mean medical science teaches us that there are advances in medicine right now that are mastering the art of studying viruses 
and bacteria and certain living organisms they study the habitat that makes them conducive is that true and they create medical mechanisms that try to extract away the atmosphere and that's it it just dies there are many things in my life and your life that have remained because we have kept the atmosphere that promotes it for instance there are many people who come and program negative things in your house because you have not created a system that honors God there. Are we together now? Yes. Some of you, your cars are full of all kinds of things. You drive for 30 minutes and all you are hearing is something that pollutes and destroys your mind. You left your house courageous. By the time you got to that place of the interview, you were already defeated because you had something. Who told you? Who told you? When God was sending us to Abuja, all I needed to know was, God, are you in it? And then grant the grace. Listen, one of the things that by the grace of God, I thank God for the grace to have done is to culture my atmosphere. My atmosphere is very strict. Very strict. Very, very strict. Very, very strict. Very, very strict very very strict you create that because you see many people's destinies depend on your motivation many people's de destinies depend on your inspiration are we together yes. some of us if we check our phones right now and we see what is in your phone both in terms of songs videos etc we will need to plead with you to run and come out right here don't wonder why familiar spirits are, are all around your life they come in response to atmospheres is that true yes sir are we together negative atmospheres ah this nigeria will we ever survive the way this thing is i hope we even see the end of the year and these spirits brood on what you have said. I'm teaching you a technology right now, Koinonia. Listen, I'm not teaching you to ignore realities when you see it. No, there are times we discuss issues. But you must understand that as a spiritual man, the modus operandi of creation is that you must fill your heart with the word of God. And out of the abundance of the heart, alongside the influence of the spirit, you begin to speak. May God bless you. Somebody comes to see you and says, listen, things are not really working well in my life. You are under the influence of the Spirit. When the Spirit of God came upon Elizabeth, remember? The mother of John, what did she begin to do? Speaking. You see it happen everywhere. The moment the Holy Ghost mantles people, they begin to speak. Trying to change your confession without allowing the word of God to work on your heart will only be hypocrisy that does not carry power. There are many people who have tried to do it. Oh, I will try to speak right, but they are not interested. The content of your heart is what inevitably reveals itself through your words. And please hear me. Next time you speak, don't you think you are just using words to explain or using words to inform more than using words as a tool for explanation and information. The most superior use of words is for programming because when God spoke the first word there was no man there yet he spoke so in order of priority and by the law of first mention words are not just a channel for information words are not just a channel for enlightenment the most superior use of words is for creation I'm on my way to better days I'm on my way to paradise. That's my confession and I truly believe it. I'm on my way to paradise. It is true for me, it is true for you, it is true for Koinonia. You receive a letter. You are being relieved from that job. Ah, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Because the Bible says, listen, every time you don't know what to say, start with atmosphere. 
let me teach you a principle every time you do not know what to say just keep quiet program the atmosphere the atmosphere will affect your heart the heart will affect your speaking your speaking will now change or maintain the reality there just to let you know that you lost the business you lost the job it may be painful you may cry because we're humans but while you cry you can just go and set something or for some of you they may even tell you, you you've lost a loved one just like that God this person shouldn't have died and then you go and put something that will program a climate for you and in the midst of that climate the Spirit of God have you noticed in the atmosphere of worship you will always hear what he's saying he will begin to encourage you there is hope for a tree even though it be cut down at the scent of water huh. let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy please hear me when you understand the prophetic power of this mystery i just taught you indeed you will be a king because you will know how to program things you can imagine as a man of God, I get text messages every day. Some of them good, some of them not so nice. Some of them even conditions about people, people in Koinonia here. And the principles of fatherhood and leadership demands that when something negative happens to someone, it touches you. And let me tell you, there are times you have to train yourself. Just know that the number one rule for your dominion is atmosphere. Don't forget this this night. The number one rule for your dominion is atmosphere. I don't care what is going wrong. Make sure that you don't lose the atmosphere. If you are crying, crying in the right, cry in the right atmosphere. Apostle, I thought that by now God would have opened that door. I thought that by now. Ah. But Lord, I give you thanks because your word says in all things I give thanks. You are creating an atmosphere. Father, I know that I've looked on to men and it looked like they are not able to help me. My uncle gave me a guarantee that the job is coming. Now the job came and my name is not there. Father, I will not be offended. I refuse offense. In the name of Jesus, offense will be a trap that will give the devil access to my life. I reject offense. In the name of Jesus, I walk by the law of love. But oh God, the Bible says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. So I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. I'm showing you how to change atmospheres. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. So Lord, I look to Yahweh. That they finally given you their word still you do not throw the atmosphere father thank you praise God from whom all blessings come Lord I thank you you are the giver of this and the Bible says whatsoever you do it endures therefore I expect my result to endure this is how a spiritual man works are we together this is what I declare over koinonia all the time in the name of Jesus, I and the ones that God has given me, we are for signs and we are for wonders in Israel. I believe it. When I pray for Koinonia, I pray for Koinonia everywhere. US, Europe, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. As you bless me, you are blessing my people. As you lift me, you are lifting them. Yes, sir. Pharaoh, you must let God's people go. In the name of Jesus. When you hear something negative, don't grumble around and say, no, it cannot be. That's emotions. That's not a spiritual man's approach. A spiritual man does not jump throwing tantrums. You may cry and do all of that. But when all is said and done, atmosphere. Remember again, atmosphere. And the atmosphere begins to play those worship songs. And your spirit is getting 
enlarged and strengthened and you begin to pray sometimes you begin to pray in the spirit and you may pray for hours until it breaks away that limitation then you begin to prophesy in the name of Jesus the gates of Abuja open up I decree and declare lift up your heads O ye gates you must become a prophet in your destiny thank God for koinonia but this 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 baby pampering you need to grow out of it win yourself and begin to walk with strong mates hallelujah in the name of Jesus I decree and declare my finance is blessed the Lord himself is bringing people to bless me the work will not suffer we have supernatural finances the wisdom of the Spirit is at work in us week in week out the Word of God comes in season where people of discernment speaking to yourself in Psalms see this is how we got here oh, let me tell you it is not magic you are too big to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit and to begin to speak forget about dominion kings reign through their words let me give you one more word and then we'll pray someone is going to return here with a strange testimony in the name of Jesus Christ Psalm 141 two scriptures God's standard for maturity and perfection is the extent to which you have gained mastery over your speakings. Psalm 131 verse 141 from verse 3. It says, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. In other words, Lord, grant me self-control self-control over my words to understand the value the creative value the programming value of my speakings as the believer in Christ so that I am not careless in the use of words I don't program ill program negative things over my life now let me show you a very powerful scripture James chapter 3 James chapter 3 give us beginning from verse 1 I want you to pay attention this will be my last reading and then we'll take a few minutes to pray my brethren be not many masters knowing that ye shall receive the greater condemnation uh-huh for in many things we offend all and if a man offend not in word is that in your Bible the same is a mature man entire whole God's standard of perfection is the scripture worthiness of your speakings the degree to which you have cultured your, your your words which is a product of the strength of the word resident within you the bible says he is able also to bridle the whole body you now see there that your words control your body three behold we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us so he's saying you want the body of the horse to obey you and the area you focus on is not the legs is the mouth and we turn about their whole body through their mouth verse 4 behold the ships though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds yet are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listed that means these giant ships ships that sometimes are bigger than this auditorium by far and yet you will see it's a little ruler that controls them and you can turn the ship literally 360 verse 5 even so in that similitude the similitude of the horse and the similitude of the ship the tongue is a little member. Koinonia, listen please. And boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire. So the tongue is more than an object. It is a fire, the Bible says. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That it defileth the whole body 
and set it on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell verse 7 for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind geography attests to this agriculture attests to this there is no animal on earth as we know now that has not been tamed by man we have been able to tame lions eagles including microorganisms but the bible says verse 8 in spite of the fact that we have been able to tame all these things it says but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison nine therewith we bless god even the father and therewith we cause men which are made after the similitude of god what a paradox with the same tongue you bless him we bless you lord you are holy and forever you are god that's what he's saying we bless you lord you are holy and forever you are god and the next moment keep that scripture please the next moment you are finding it you are cursing people who are made in the same image of the god that you're worshiping verse 10 the bible says out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing my brethren these things ought not so to be two more verses 11 dot a fountain set forth the same place sweet water and bitter no can a fig tree my brethren bear olive berries either can a vine bear figs so can no fountain yield both fresh and salt water you know what he's saying it is within your power to choose that by the agency of the spirit if you look at this tongue as small as it is forget that your mouth is closing it it is closing many people's destinies as small as this tongue is apostle james was saying this tongue the same way a little rudder of a ship can turn that ship left and right based on what the compass says or what the captain wants the same way a horse a horse that is so powerful yet they bridle the tongue and can move it they can force it by doing something to the tongue that means he's saying if your destiny is going wrong remember you are the captain of your destiny you don't have to start pushing the ship to go back what you need to begin to do is to go back how did the prodigal son go back he said to himself that's the starting point of his restoration he came to himself and said not and did it was saying first I will arise and I will go back to my father the moment the Spirit of God came upon the four lepers they started speaking you see the pattern everywhere when the Holy Ghost rests upon people they begin to speak for many of you the power of God comes upon you whether in church whether in your homes and there is an opportunity to program that climate to be a prophetic rainmaker and then you keep quiet no. in the name of Jesus for as long as I live my body remains in health perfection is my portion by the power of the Holy Spirit I decree and declare that the Word of God upon my lips continue to change nations you go and lay your hands and begin to speak over your office in the name of Jesus listen I want you to teach your children I want you to teach them if, if you can guide the people even within your organization that there is a creed and a code of conduct that you speak this is not the issue of Christianity if I will use that it is even from a scientific standpoint it's been proven that words heal words are medicinal the Bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine is that true but that a broken spirit can dry up the bones I will worship him forever 
love him forever because this God is too good. You know, I shared with you a story here, Koinonia, that one time a gentleman was entering into a city and um, two gentlemen actually, and there was a farmer that they met just by the entrance of the city. And one walked to the farmer and said, dear farmer, and he said, yes, how can I help you? And he said, I hear that this city is full of all kinds of things, violence, you know, moral decadence. This city is full of thieves, armed robbers, unserious people. And the farmer kept quiet and said, you are right. And the man passed. A few hours later, another gentleman coming into the city stopped by and said, dear farmer, he said, yes, can I help you? And he said, I hear that this city is full of visionary people. The soil is very good. It is able to produce. And the farmer said, yes. All of it can be found in the same city. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like economically we are going down. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like we are losing our touch governmentally, unfortunately. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like there's darkness and everything. In that same Nigeria, God is raising an army. In that same Nigeria, there are souls that are being saved. In that same Nigeria, are we together now? It is up to you to change your perception by the influence of the Spirit. That when men say there is a casting down, you don't join them to say there is a casting down. The reason why they are down is because they said it. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Koinonia, learn to say so. Because when you say so, it becomes so. When you say so, you create it so. When you say so, you become a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny. Walking in abundance, moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. I believe it. That I am walking in abundance, moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. Let me tell you the truth. I'm going to say something and I want you to pay attention. Years ago, even before God began to help this ministry and show us mercy, even in the area of finance and the rest, physically, everything was not there. We still had limitations here and there. But I can tell you by God, one thing I never stopped doing was to prophesy the, the version of Koinonia that will be financially stable to serve the Lord. I vowed a vow that I will never lie and manipulate God's people because of looking for offering to pay for tea and bread. And I found from scripture, I said, when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? I submit to you without any sense of pride. It does not matter what nation and what region God takes us. We have mastered the art of the supply of the spirit. Yes, sir. There's nothing the devil can do about it. It's not pride. It's the truth. Hallelujah. There is no time you will come here for koinonia and you will not experience the presence of God to lift you. Because you see, before you arrive here, the rainmakers were at work. Koinonia does not start on Sunday. The koinonia starts immediately after the last service. There are rainmakers. Are we together? The worship team is singing, praying, preparing to set the atmosphere. The prayer band is sending that, that cloud. Everybody's making his contribution. By the time we arrive, the cloud is ready. It's not our arrival that makes the cloud. That's too late. Whether the devil goes to Zaria or comes here or decides to go to, you know, Kenya or go to America, the, the beautiful thing about cloud, eh? so many of you have flown across and you can see that sometimes you look at the, I mean, the size of the cloud covering, you, you can look at the region that the cloud is covering. That means you can be able to make such investment in the spirit that from here it will reach the U.S. From here it will reach Europe. In the name of Jesus Christ, you can program that cloud over your house. The moment defeat and failure comes, 
the priest in the house has become a rainmaker already satan not my children in the name of jesus satan not my finances satan not my spiritual life satan not my passion not my word study life you will not deflate my passion for god let the redeemed of the lord say so remember the law is atmosphere the atmosphere gives the holy spirit room to rest upon you in partnership with the word of god that has been invested within your spirit you begin to speak in psalms in hymns in spiritual songs everything that is less than psalms hymns spiritual songs please do not give it dominion over your speaking that a major part of your speaking should be a communication of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I've had the honor and the privilege of many times meeting the fathers of faith in this nation, and I can tell you in my experience, every one of them that I have met, the moment you talk to them, after 10 seconds they are saying something, either it is well, or praise God, or hallelujah, give God praise. They are with you. They have cultured themselves. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is well. While you are there and the devil is trying to tell you something that you should not believe. Praise God. It is well. Hallelujah. It is well. Ah, daddy, this, it is well. It is well. Praise God. Praise God. No wonder they still remain. Praise God. No wonder they still stand. It is well. No wonder the doors keep opening. Hallelujah. It is well. It is well. The hymn writer says it is well and it is well with my soul. Listen, we are wrapping up. We are going to take two or three minutes to speak. But I have given you a new position tonight. Consistent with scripture. You are a prophetic rainmaker over your life. This is how kings reign. This is how kings reign. This is how kings reign. We reign through the excellency of our words. For as long as I am alive, the name of the Lord will be exalted through my life. The name of the Lord will be exalted through this ministry. For as long as I am alive, Nigeria will remain in God's prophetic program, the cutting edge of God's program. While we see the, the decline economically and otherwise, for us, so, we begin to pray that Lord in the midst of this darkness you are brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from darkness the Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness you are causing The worst thing to lose is your sound. The worst thing to lose is your atmosphere. The worst thing to lose is your voice. You can lose money, your voice will bring it back. You can lose relationships, your speakings will bring it back. You can lose whatever at the scent of water. The voice of the Lord upon the waters is mighty. But if you lose your speaking, even the culmination of this church age, will happen with sound is the loud sound of the archangel that will wrap up this dispensation the earth started as far as we know through the sound of his word and God said anything will start continue and come to end in your life by saying and God blessed man and said and Abraham blessed Isaac and said and Isaac blessed Jacob and said make up your mind from today that the word of God is going to be a, an intentional investment please look at me go and get Bible on mp3 go and get scriptures you can get it online It's free to download some of you are into tech businesses this is what you should do I just gave you a business idea instead of running around and stealing you can do something that is noble and honorable package the Word of God some of you here you don't have to depend online 
you can go ahead and put together 100 healing scriptures 50 scriptures that help to redefine your identity in Christ give your son as a gift son you are 10 years old you are 2 years old you are 5 years old let me teach you how kings reign kings do not reign by roaming around and waiting for things to happen you put it in your ears you program yourself your little baby without the ability to talk without the ability to understand but with the ability to transport words into his or her spirit in the name of Jesus baby I decree and declare that you will serve the Lord all the days of your life you are a proper child you are blessed I want you to do it husband lay your hands on your wife speak to her she's going out oh may God bless you don't just say honey God bless you and and then later you hear something you don't want to hear in the name of Jesus I stand as your husband and I declare I declare that your morning is commanded go in peace return with joy you go forth in peace you are led forth with joy little children are going to school in the name of Jesus I bless you go and do exploits you are a champion go and reign they will laugh you will think it's not getting into them by the time someone looks at them in school and say you are a fool they'll say daddy said I'm a champion yes sir yes sir you come to church for koinonia and several things are annoying you make up your mind the moment you are angry stop talking get an atmosphere put something in your ears in the name of Jesus you immediately you are transported into a realm of possibilities and what would have made you angry is just neutralized because remember when seasons are about to open in your life I've taught you one of the things is the spirit of offense everything your husband annoys you your wife annoys you your staff annoy you Nigeria annoys you Africa annoys you journalists annoy you everything even God same seems to annoy you but you must make up your mind the climate I remember atmosphere is a law I just lost this business in the name of Jesus I refuse to be sad I refuse to walk in despair you set that atmosphere some of you my dear people all this worship that you are playing here don't just do it for koinonia alone I've taught you this one hour imagine if they do something like that won't you patronize them one hour of soaking worship volume one Are we together I'm not saying this, this is not it's not so much I'm serious with what I'm saying program that atmosphere imagine that you just wake up from sleep and you are just stretching and all you hear is amen 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 hey amen 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 for stretching and you move to the other side of the bed the dream continues in that dream you are scattering the gates of hell empowered by the strength of the word within you you get up with the keys like Jesus got up from the keys as soon as you wake up from that dream who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty battle One more time. Amen.
tear yourselves into three if you can. We're going to spend the remaining just three, three. If there's nobody there, just make it two or whatever. But please, we're going to pray. Help them under the anointing. We're going to pray. Just two, three minutes. You're going to begin to pray in the spirit. Find any hand you find there and begin to pray and make declarations over the person's hand you are holding. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I come as a prophetic rainmaker. Come on, Koinonia. Following from your home, hold the hands of your children if you can. Hold the hand of your wife, your husband. Hold the hand of your neighbor, whoever you find. Touch and agree by faith. Go ahead and begin to pray. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Declare it by the Spirit. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. I command restoration in the name of Jesus. The deliverer is showing up for you. Koinonia pray Koinonia global pray America pray Europe pray Africa pray I am a prophetic rainmaker I program the spiritual climate of my brother and my sister no more losses no more failure in the name of Jesus superior wisdom superior favor higher levels of power higher levels of grace strange breakthroughs by the spirit pray the anointing that is within me is finding expression in the name of jesus man of god pray and declare it's a new season in ministry it's a new season of exploits and impact for Jesus by the Spirit the hand of God is upon me therefore I speak in Psalms I speak in hymns I speak in spiritual songs making melody in my heart even unto God no failure in the name of Jesus my path is as a shining light shining ever brighter even unto the perfect day the Lord is my light and salvation in the name of Jesus I rise by revelation the mighty hand of God is upon me when men say there is a casting down I declare by the spirit that there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus the God of Joshua is arising for me by the power of the Holy Spirit I am blessed in the city blessed in the country Koinonia is blessed revealing Jesus bringing him glory across the nations of the earth I declare pray over your brother I rebuke the plan of the devil over his life over her life in the name of Jesus perfect health perfect soundness you will not die before your time in the name of Jesus your relevance will not be cut short the spirit of the waster is far from you of nations the gates of territories are opening by the spirit in the name of Jesus the sick are healed oppressed delivered the confused find direction sinners come to Jesus pray for Nigeria declare over Nigeria Nigeria will not fall Nigeria will not be destroyed for the sake of the elect of God. 
no matter the schemings of darkness the purposes of God over this nation over Africa and you who is watching by, uh, by television pray for your nation mention the name of your nation South Africa Kenya Ghana Rwanda Uganda Central African Republic Cameroon declare by the spirit Cote d'Ivoire Africa is engulfed with the fire of revival Europe America Australia Asia Hallelujah Hallelujah in the name of Jesus this is how kings reign this is how kings rule this is how kings rise for by your words you are condemned and by your words you are justified hallelujah I'm going to speak over your life now then I'll do the altar call and then we're done this is already a pre-miracle service believe me it's going to be fire next week in this place this is this is pre-miracle service I want to speak over your life no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me no one you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me one more time no shadow you will light up no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me I have taught you tonight how kings reign every king you see who has taken his place of dominion and is manipulating the spiritual climates to reveal Jesus in his life has done it through the excellency of the speakings of the Word of God now that you understand the power of words let me speak over your life you don't have to kneel or what let it just be that your heart is opened please believe when Gabriel stood before Zechariah, he said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. That means the presence of God has purified me, purified every falsehood. You can trust what you hear. That's what he was saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand as a prophetic rainmaker over someone's life. That drought in your life, in the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall For someone here, I prophesy to you, you will not see wind. You will not see rain even. But I declare by all means, may your valley be filled. May your valley be filled. Hear me. According to the law of time and chance, for some of you, certain things have gotten to your turn, but demon spirits made it jump over you. I stand by the prophetic. I take it back to your turn. I take a I take it back to your turn. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. If there is any negative 
programming that came either by mistake or by ignorance you didn't know and you kept speaking things now that the devil is using for some of you based on what you have said you are not even more than two years left to live because you kept cutting your years with your words i stand by the power of the prophetic and in the name of jesus i cancel every word speaking against you i cancel every word speaking against you For the Bible says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And it said, every tongue that arises, please hear me. No matter who has said what against you, maybe growing up, maybe his parents, sincere people, but what they have said is being used by the devil. It has become a, a negative rain-making process by the power of the prophetic. I cancel it now. Where they said you will fall, I prophesy, stand. Where they said you will not rise, I speak, fly, not only rise, in the name of Jesus. Where they say you will not find helpers, you will even have to choose who to help you. where it has been programmed that you will lose your spiritual fire you will lose your relevance you will lose your bishopric you will lose your lampstand i prophesy 30 years from now if christ tarries you will still be standing final prophetic word anyone under the sound of my voice that this statement ichabod has been roaming around your head that means you are good for nothing that means the glory has departed that means everybody who sees you they should treat you like an outcast in the name of jesus i roll away that negative word i say it again for someone who has been trusting god for rain your plans have refused to grow prophetically because the rain has refused to come i stand tonight as a prophetic rainmaker, and i say it again by the power of words because by these words the cloud is full of rain may your rain begin to fall those of you in ministry i announce to you this is your season of exploits no power in existence will downplay and demean the anointing upon your life those of you who are diplomats and captains of industry we clear the way for your relevance in the name of jesus those of you who are businessmen here and it looks like there is an embargo on your business you have tried but it looks like you are not rising if you believe this prophetic word i declare that between now and the end of october not november october in the name of jesus receive strange help from god and for everyone here who is in need of restoration between now and the miracle service may god do something that has not been done in your life since the beginning of this year <laughs> hallelujah wave your hands to jesus and give him praise wave your hands to jesus a wave offering is a mystery in the spirit thank you jesus we bless you we receive this by faith hallelujah hallelujah Please lend me just two minutes. Let's minimize movement, be patient. I know that there are so many people. I want to make an altar call. Someone came to church here and whilst you heard me talk about the power of words, you just realized that the word that will lead to your eternal redemption, you have not yet declared it. For the Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Very quickly, 
two people in one there are those who are saying apostle give me an opportunity i want to know jesus i want to use my mouth and to practicalize this right now to make that declaration of faith there are others who are saying apostle i have made that statement but i'm not serious i want to make it right i want to rededicate my life whether you are in this auditorium up the balcony all of the overflows and those who are following across the globe here is an opportunity i'm going to count one to five i want you to quickly boldly don't let the devil remember we just spoke about words don't let the devil tell you people are looking at you no come who told you you cannot be saved who told you he cannot love you you can start afresh i don't care how it has been you can keep standing let's celebrate them as they come thank you thank you koinonia is this the best you can do celebrate salvation young old male female and all those who are making this decision from across the globe here is your chance to make it right with jesus there's no compulsion to it but remember by your words you are justified and by your words you are condemned there were two thieves that hung on the cross with jesus one by his left and right one was making careless use of words and he was speaking in a very foolish and unwise way and the other one spoke wisely with humility and brokenness and jesus said about the latter that this day you will be with me in paradise words are powerful thank you very much for making this decision in the name of jesus christ as i lead you it's my honor to lead you to jesus the fountain of life the beginning and the end he's alpha he's omega may i request that you please lift your hands high above your head as a sign of surrender this is to Jesus, this is to the King Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God. Say after me as loud and clear as you can, say Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If you're joining them, come quickly. Say Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word and I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe in you that you are my Savior. I believe in you that you are my Lord I believe in you that you are my King tonight by faith and through the power of my words I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i declare that i'm born again i'm a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this lovely people a precious family from across the globe and even here in this auditorium thank you father for bringing them to jesus such an honor to lead them to the cross i pray by the power of the holy spirit and upon the integrity of your word alongside their, their, their declarations of faith i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of eternal life in the name of jesus i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance even among them that are sanctified and i declare in the name of jesus that from today you are the righteousness of god in christ i declare by the power of the holy spirit go from glory to glory and grace to grace and every spirit that has hijacked your life and your destiny i command it to leave you now upon the integrity of your confession i declare be set free this moment in jesus mighty name we pray amen. amen and amen a big congratulations to all of you please may i request that you together move to my right just for a brief word with the counselors let's honor them as they go just a word and you'll be back it's going to be just a few minutes and you'll be back let's celebrate them as they go koinonia is this the best you can do hello 
your beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.